Well, hello there and good morning. Today's Thursday, September 19th, and you're watching News Channel Nebraska. My name is Eric McKay. Thank you so much for joining us. Authorities tell us a man has died after he was shot earlier this week in Omaha. The shooting happened Tuesday evening near 16th and Farnham in downtown Omaha. Police say 26-year-old Ramon Tramble was shot and taken to Nebraska Medicine Hospital in critical condition. A police official said last night Tramble was pronounced dead at the hospital. Authorities say they believe it's an isolated incident, possibly the result of a fight. No word yet on any arrests. Police are asking anyone who might have any information to contact Omaha Crime Stoppers. A scary situation could have turned out much worse this week. Kearney police say a car hit a pair of Kearney High Cross Country runners. A police spokesman says a 17-year-old girl and a 16-year-old girl both suffered what were called minor injuries. Both were hospitalized as a precaution. Police cited the driver for a traffic violation. A Kearney Public School spokesperson confirmed the girls are students at Kearney High and were running as part of cross-country practice. The Nebraska State Patrol officially broke ground on an expansion for the NSP Crime Laboratory during a ceremony yesterday in Air Park. The golden shovels in the ground symbolizing a $26 million expansion to their current crime lab, doubling the base facility from 31,000 square feet 59,000 square feet. Since the crime lab first opened in 2015, the State Patrol says they've seen a 23% increase in case submissions, justifying the need for more space. They've already added four new jobs and expect to add more. They say the facility will be finished by mid to late 2026. Nebraska's top election official is warning voters about third-party early voting applications. Secretary of State Bob Evans says his office has received questions about the applications, which are being sent to Nebraskans. Evans says those forms don't come from his office. He says residents don't need to fill out these third-party forms. He says county election offices already have sent their own early voting postcards to respective voters starting in July and August. The mailers aren't illegal. They come from third-party organizations. They're common voting outreach tactics ahead of general and midterm elections, but often utilize outdated data. Evnan says voters with questions can get answers and check their voting status at the Secretary of State's website. A man accused of shooting and killing a 52-year-old man at an apartment near downtown Lincoln in April pleaded not guilty this week. 53-year-old Jacob Malloy charged with first-degree murder and use of a firearm to commit a felony related to the murder of John Armstrong. It happened in April at a home in Lincoln. Police say Malloy was the one who called them to say he had shot Armstrong. Malloy told police at the time the two were long-term acquaintances, but that Armstrong was in Malloy's home without his permission. Malloy being held on $1 million bond. The city of North Platte is suing a California developer over a local landmark. In the lawsuit filed last month in Lincoln County District Court, the city alleges developer Jay Mitchell has failed to keep the Hotel Pawnee in good standing as it relates to codes and ordinances. Several years ago, the city established a property resolution team in an attempt to clean up North Platte, and city leaders say the downtown landmark has been an ongoing topic of discussion. And we have a list that we maintain, and uh, the Pawnee Hotel has been on the list the very longest, by far, by, by nearly double, not quite double the number of days, because its, its status is unknown and therefore unresolved. Kelleher says the best possible outcome in regard to the Hotel Pawnee lawsuit includes an inspection of the long-abandoned property. Now, the developer held an open house four years ago showing work his crew has done on three floors of the property, but there have been few updates since then. The Nebraska Human Trafficking Task Force held their first conference yesterday in Kearney. There were almost 300 attendees, with Attorney General Mike Hilgers among them. Hilger says his team has spent lots of time prosecuting human traffickers and they're hoping to eradicate it from the state of Nebraska. When you talk about human trafficking, y'all think sex trafficking. We know in this room it's not just sex trafficking, it's also labor trafficking. 
And we're going to highlight sort of this, the state of play in Nebraska on labor trafficking. So we think about how we can engage in that fight also. The Attorney General's office has added a staffer that specializes in helping Native Americans who've been trafficked. Hilger says that's the first position of its type in the country. A group in northeast Nebraska is looking to make more properties available for future homeowners. Andrew Pfeiffer has more. With high property taxes and inflation, many lots around Norfolk are becoming vacant and unaffordable. The Northeast Nebraska Regional Land Bank is taking matters into their own hands. It's a win-win for county, city, and the individuals that are going to live here. But what is exactly the overall purpose of a land bank? And that is to take abandoned and tax delinquent properties, much like the one you see behind me here, and to refurbish them into new affordable housing for future residents of Norfolk. It's gonna have a new property in, which just helps the neighbors and the whole neighborhood improves along the way to be a better neighborhood and a better part of the community of Norfolk. Along with help from the city, Brett Schneider is already bringing in abandoned properties. The city of Norfolk has contributed over 130 some thousand to this project, knowing that this is a good cause for the community to get houses demoed. Those properties after being demoed will be rebuilt and sold back to homeowners in either Norfolk or Hader. Our purpose is to assist a homeowner who has no other way to tear it down to donate that property to the land bank and then we go ahead and spend the money to tear it down at our expenses. With efforts from projects like these, it can help brighten up neighborhoods and provide more future housing opportunities to Norfolk residents. It takes a process to do this. There's a lot that goes into it, a lot of different entities. We've had a really great staff. Properties can be donated as well as sold in order to help flip the value of affordable housing. Reporting in Norfolk, Andrew Pfeiffer, News Channel, Nebraska. The Nebraska political landscape continues to make waves on the national scene. Republican South Carolina U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham met with more than a dozen Republican members of Nebraska's officially nonpartisan legislature at the governor's mansion yesterday. That's according to multiple state senators. Graham reportedly met with them to discuss the topic of making Nebraska a winner-take-all state in the Electoral College. Last week, Governor Jim Pillen said he would like to call a special session to do just that, but said he would not do so until he has 33 votes to ensure a bill is passed. State senators estimate 30 to 31 votes have been confirmed. Nebraska, one of just two states that splits its votes in the Electoral College, Maine is the lone other. Nebraska's 2nd District has gone for Democrats twice in the past four elections. A school in northern Nebraska put on secure status earlier this week. Officials from Kippahaw County School say the lockdown was brief and held as a precautionary measure because of a personal threat made by someone outside the school building. The school says local law enforcement responded quickly, managed the threat, and say school was back to regular business in less than half an hour. Uh, during a secure status, the doors on the school grounds are locked and no one is allowed in or out of the building. A piece of art is bringing people together in central Nebraska. Ana Ruth Lugo Mejia explains how. The flag that I'm painting right now is Ethiopia, so I've been working on it. It's not done, so don't judge. Members of a central Nebraska community are joining hands for a colorful project. Angelica Calderon is an English teacher at the Literacy Council in Grand Island. Early Wednesday morning, she joined many of her students and others to paint a mural outside of the Literacy Council facilities. They are painting 36 hands. Each hand is holding a flag of a different country. These flags actually represent our current and past students that we've had here at the Literacy Council. The Literacy Council aims to teach students the literacy skills needed to communicate and succeed within the community. The nonprofit team up with Grand Island Welcoming Initiative as part of a series of events meant to foster cross-cultural collaboration and celebrate diversity. It's important to know just the diversity that we have. It's not like a small population. We have a lot of students from many countries all over the world. So this is a good visual that you could see all the countries that they are from. On Thursday, the Literacy Council will paint another one of its walls with another mural. The community is invited to stop by and paint from 9 to 3. Welcoming Week is a nationwide celebration. 
in Grand Island, it's taking place from September 13th to the 22nd. In Grand Island, Ana Ruth Lugo Mejia, New Channel, Nebraska. It's the moment millions of American consumers have been waiting for the Federal Reserve announcing its first interest rate cut since March of 2020. Karen Kafa has the details and what's next. The Federal Open Market Committee decided to reduce the degree of policy restraint by lowering our policy interest rate by a half percentage point. A pivotal moment in the Federal Reserve's battle against post-pandemic inflation and for U.S. consumers squeezed by both higher prices and higher interest rates. The Fed starting to peel its key interest rate off of a 23-year high, setting the wheels in motion for consumers to eventually see relief on debt payments from credit cards to auto loans to mortgages. But that relief won't come immediately or quickly as the Fed keeps an eye on inflation and the slowing labor market to guide future decisions. They have to look at this job market and figure out, is this return in normal or is this a slowdown that we need to be concerned with? And I think those call for two very different policy prescriptions and that's sort of the, the, the tricky balance that they're trying to strike at the moment. Despite the cooling job market, data released Tuesday by the Commerce Department showed consumer spending holding up. Most economists viewing the Fed's September meeting not as an end of an era for interest rates, but the beginning of a new one. And I think everyone agrees right now that, um, including the, the Fed officials, that you know, interest rates are going to head much lower because that's ultimately needed to um, uh, to sustain a healthy rate of economic growth. The Federal Reserve hiking interest rates 11 times starting in March 2022. The central bank's last increase was in July 2023. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. In sports, it's a big week and big weekend for Husker Volleyball facing two non-conference foes. Both matchups possible Final Four previews, one of those last night, with the fifth-ranked Big Red knocking off second-ranked Stanford at the Devaney Center. Jake Bartecki has more. Once again, number five Nebraska hands another team their first loss of the season. This time the victim, the second ranked Stanford Cardinal as the Huskers sweep their way to their ninth win of the season. The Huskers faced some adversity, especially in that second set when they allowed an 8-0 Stanford run, but they never wavered and head coach John Cook said he was proud of his Husker team. Yeah, I thought the Huskers came out and played great tonight. The crowd was really electric tonight. And I think when we made a couple of those defensive plays in the crowd, Harper ran in the scorer's table. I just thought our team just got, you know, came out attacking and attacked all, all three games. Nebraska did a lot of things right on Wednesday, but a few stand out. The Huskers held Stanford to 100 hitting, a group that entered hitting over 310. In addition, Nebraska doubled up Stanford in blocks. Five of those came from Andy Jackson. Overall, as a team, we blocked really, really well and not even like stuff blocks in a sense, but more just touches. I think like one of our things was just go out early and touch a lot of balls and like get on their attackers early because as an attacker, it's very defeating having someone touch a lot of your attacks and so we knew that if we went out early and we could slow them down early then it would really slow down their offense. The Huskers were also over 94% at the service line with five aces. You know, everybody talks about how tough Stanford serves. So I think I think for our team we wanted to say, hey, we're, we're a good serving team too. And we, we, we did a really nice job with it. The road gets no easier for the Big Red. They now head to Kentucky where they'll take on fourth ranked Louisville in what could be one of the most hostile environments the Big Red will see all season. Merritt Beeson says when it comes to Stanford, Nebraska proved something, but they're looking for even more. We're just learning each and every match and I think for us it was like we can go out there, we can stick to a game plan and we can execute. And so for us, I mean, I'm sure this will be a huge confidence boost, but I mean, we have another Final Four match on Sunday, so we also can't get cocky and let it get to our head and think we're just going to walk into Louisville and roll them. So it'll be back to work tomorrow and figure out what we have to do to beat Louisville. With the win, the Huskers improved to 9-1, and one, and they now head to Louisville, as we mentioned, on Sunday morning. That match will be must-see TV. The Cardinals 8-1 and one on the year. Their only loss to a top-five team in Penn State when they were swept. That one getting underway at 11.30 Central Time on Sunday morning. Covering the Huskers, Jake Bartecki on CN Sports Now. And that's a look at sports for your Thursday. Stick around. We've got more news and weather on the way. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. You're watching News Channel Nebraska.